But as an African American woman, it's been such a challenge. And I think anybody who is talking to an African American woman director knows that it has been tough, and especially in the uh, feature film arena. And when I knew I was going to do this panel, I just wanted to give a little, um, there was a survey conducted by the DGA, and that's the Directors Guild of America, of more than 2,600 television episodes from 170 scripted TV series for the 2010 and 2011 season found that white males directed 77% of all episodes, and white females directed 11% of all shows. Black women and minority women directed 1% of Still. these shows, according to the survey of the programs in the major broadcast networks. So you, this is what we're kind of facing, and I think that a lot of times we don't really realize the magnitude of what we're coming up against. And it has a lot to do with our history and what images we, uh, the uh, studios, the financiers want to portray. So my, uh, I, when I did my film, uh, the first feature, uh, there was no one who really wanted to do a fit. Now this was back in 93, so you have to have to kind of wait <laughs> And you have to kind of see that that was when, you know, there was Boys in the Hood, just another, I mean, um, uh, She's Gotta Have It, uh, there, uh, New Jack City. And I came out to theater saying that I wanted to see a film about a black woman, a story about a black woman. Uh, but it was really hard to get financing. I actually, it took us five years to do the film we got financing from American Film Institute, uh, National Endowment for the Arts, uh, pieced together like enough money. The film was done from my apartment. I had no relatives in the business or anything. I just wanted to see this film made and didn't know if it would even happen. We got friends and family together, fast forward to just shoot the film, ran out of money during post-production. We went back in and uh, uh, we started screening for people. Uh, Terry McMillan actually uh, had read the script from who had heard about the project and she uh, read it that night that she got it. She was on the West Coast and she called me and it was on the East Coast. It was 3 o'clock in the morning and she said, Sister, I have like five pages left to read your script. What's going to happen to Chantel and this baby? And she, she fell and expressed the check to me the next day. Wow. So we could finish part of the film. And also Michael Moore, who did uh, Fahrenheit 9-11, this is, um, I saw him at a, um, I went to one of these kind of seminars, and I talked to him and told him I was trying to do this film, and I respected him as a filmmaker. We had a cut together. He came to, to do our film lab, and it was on, he saw the film and said, and wrote out a check right then. I mean, I feel that like a lot of people, if they really want to help a cause, they don't have to think about it. They know, uh, they understand and that our legacy in this country 